I'm Danielle McCartan here at Yankee Stadium with Yankees all-star, four-time world champion pitcher Jeff Nelson. Uh, we're here at a Mint Pro's J.R. Wynn Productions event. What's the coolest part about being back here for an event like this? Oh, well, you get to see some guys that you played with, John Wetlands here, and Charlie Hayes, Jim Leeritz. Mm -hmm. Getting back to New York, I work in the city with MLB.com, so I do, and also come to the stadium quite a bit. So anytime you get to come back, get back to the fans, get to see some people that used to watch me when I played mm -hmm. and reminisce, and, and you know, you get to watch the ball game, so that's the best part. Um, what are like the best stories that you hear from the guys that come here and, and talk to you here? Oh, uh, you know, we just had our 96 reunion here a few weeks ago, and just... You know, you don't realize, you don't see each other very often because it isn't like, oh, we keep in contact with everybody in the wintertime. You usually see each other at these events or if you're here at Yankee Stadium. It's, you talk about the old times. You talk about the 96 team. When you, everybody's getting introduced, you don't realize how great a team that we had. And you talk, start talking about those times, and it was almost like yesterday. Uh, the stories that you tell as far as out in the bullpen or off the field, uh, it, it brings back a lot of memories and you just laugh and, and you don't, and then you start remembering things that you forgot a long time ago. So that's the best part. Yeah, I was here for that game too. I was in the bleachers and you were don't on the field. Don't tell me how old you were, so I don't need to know. <laughs> uh, but I was just, um, I was wondering, like, who were you so happy to see and what kind of stories came out of that uh, event? Well, you know, John Wetland, he has been around a long time. The last time I saw him was uh, when Mariano Rivera retired or in his day. Uh, his last year, they had something for him. Uh, we did a lot. I mean, the bullpens in New York, Old Yankee Stadium, most every stadium was so far away from everybody else that we could actually, you know, do things that nobody ever knew that we were doing. So you, re you tell stories about that. You reminisce about some of the games we used to play. Because we're out of the dugout, it, it gets really monotonous out there. And if you really focus on the game all the time, you, you probably want to don't doing well so we don't focus until the fifth inning and we have little reindeer games out there and we play and, and we were all leaders we did some stuff that we can't even tell on camera but it's fun <laughs> and, you, and you laugh about it because most of the guys that were from the in the bullpen were there that day in the 96 were reunion. yeah yeah they were so um, did you were you able to impart any wisdom onto the younger players or no no you know it's interesting because you go to you go to the Yankee camp a couple years ago I've gone I went to the instructional league and you get a lot of guys that'll come up and ask you, uh, you know, how did you pitch to certain guys? What did you do as far as warming up? This is a very intimidating city. Uh, it, you know, winning means more here than probably anywhere else in, in baseball. Mr. Steinbrenner is no longer around, so that pressure is gone. The media, I think, is a little tamer. You know, back when we played, the media was a little ruthless. So, and the fans are so great. You, you know, they they expect 100% all the time. So it's like. It's those times, it's knowing that, hey, you're not going to be perfect all the time, you know, how to get over that and quickly forget about last night if you didn't do well or yesterday if you didn't do well. And they start asking me the different pitches, how to face guys, what did I do when I warmed up. And that's great. I mean, I did that when I was young. I would look at players and try to pick their brain so I could have success in the major leagues. Right. So I, uh, I'm a player myself. Uh, I was, I'm an athlete, softball okay. player. I brought a ball here. I was wondering if you could show me how to throw your famous slider. Okay. Actually, we're not right. going to throw it, but just no, we're not. Okay. where to put. Well, I probably, my arm would break by now, if anyway. <laughs> but you know, I always I threw a two-seam fastball, and I always threw a breaking ball, and everything comes off your middle finger. Mm -hmm. So I always picked a, a big high seam mm -hmm. out of one of the four, and then I would put my middle finger here, and I would hold it, and I would just snap real hard. And, and you know when I and hopefully I got on top and it was a big enough break that I would get people out. But I had a good breaking ball when I threw over top and then I became a pitcher, not sidearm, like three quarters and my yep. breaking ball got bigger. Yeah. So usually it, everything comes off your middle finger and your two fingers are together. And you eventually added a cut fastball too. So like a yeah, a little, a little bit, but mostly it was a fastball slider. Okay. And, and, you know, and then I threw a you know, four seamer or two seam fastball. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. I've never had a lesson from a... <laughs> <laughs> so, I gotta ask you this. You're a pitcher with two career at-bats. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, three, actually. I had all bunts. Oh, all bunts. Bunt, all bunts. Three at-bats, all bunts. Well, I was gonna ask you, because the MLB is considering adding pitchers to the Home Run Derby. What do you think about that? <sighs> well, I don't like seeing... I mean, there's some... I mean, we all think we could hit. You yeah. Just like the regulars think that they could pitch. You know, they're down there warming up, throwing knuckleballs and all that stuff. But, you know, we... I played my whole career in the American League, so the only time we got to hit was when we were getting ready for interleague play. And Mel Sotomayor was our pitching coach, so we would have relievers against starters. I can hit 70, 80 miles an hour. I mean, our relievers, we beat the starters to death every single time when we played games. Me watching the game and watching a National League game, I don't like seeing the pitchers hit. Some guys can. You have Bumgarner, you have Granke, who's actually a decent hitter. Arietta for the Cubs is a decent hitter. 
uh, you know, Cologne, he's got his career home run at what 43 years old or whatever he is. Uh, I don't like seeing him hit. I mean, you look at Xing Ming Wong that was here yeah. with the Yankees, now he's with the Royals. This guy, you know, almost ruined his career running the bases. Uh, we had a pitcher for the Miami Marlins, he pulled an oblique, swinging in the cages. They pay these guys so much money to do what they need to do on the mound. I, I don't need to see them hit. I like the American League style. I know there's people that love the Amer you know, National League style. So keep them out of the home run derby. I, I don't want to see it. I don't like seeing them hit during the regular season. I definitely don't want to see them hit home runs during the during home run derby. Yeah. So then, just finally, yeah, you do Fox Sports. Uh, you work with the Marlins right. a little bit. So how do you see the NL uh, wild card race shaping up? Well, you know, the Marlins. Was, they were in it for, well, they still are, four, I mean, a 25 games, still, you know, four games out. They were in it for a while, they're still in it, it looks a little bleak now, you know, a lot of injuries. It's going to be the Dodgers and obviously the Giants, one of them will win the East, the other one will be the, one of the wild card teams. It's going to be the Cardinals, it could be the Mets, the Mets are really hot right now, and that's all it took because nobody out of the Pirates, Mets, Marlins, and Cardinals, they all were not very good for about the last month. And now the Mets are playing well. They've been there last year, so they have a taste and they know what it takes to get there again. Unfortunately, they're not going to win the East, so they're going to have to have that playing game if they do make the wild card. So out of any of the teams, if anybody's going to catch the Cardinals, it's probably going to be the Mets. Yeah, I agree. I, and I'm not a Mets fan. I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I have to be because I'm in the media, but yeah. I, otherwise I wouldn't. Yeah, so just, you know, I came across something and I wasn't sure if I should ask you, but I'm going to ask you. Did you try selling pe uh, bone chips? No, you know, I did yeah, I did a radio. I, I live, when I lived in Seattle and played for the Mariners, yeah. I had a radio, my own radio show even when I played. Okay. And when I had surgery, the uh, doctor, it was right during the middle of the season. It was in 2002, I think. The, the, uh, I had my bone chips in a little thing and I took it to the radio station and they said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm not going to do with it, anything with it, I'm throwing them away. So they <laughs> took it and they were going to raise, uh, they said, can we put it on eBay? And then I had to sign all kinds of stuff. So they, the radio station did it and they were going to raise money for the Curtis Williams Fund who was a running back for the Washington Huskies college football broke his neck. And uh, he op they opened up a foundation and they were going to donate all the money and it got up to like Harmless. twenty five or $26,000. Wow. And then, like eBay pulled it and uh, said you can't do body parts or whatever. So I think they wound up doing it on their own website and it raised like four or $5,000 for the Curtis Williams Foundation. So I'm like, all right, if you want to take little things that make you sick, then go ahead. Do whatever you need to do with them. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm Danielle McCartan. This is Jeff Nelson, and we are here at a MinPros J. Irwin Productions event in Yankee Stadium. Thank you. Yep. Oh, you're welcome. There you go. That was good. All right. So I was good.